Splatoon 3 may be the third entry in the Splatoon series, but it definitely does not mean that there aren't any new players in the game. What's up guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Dusty, one half of our Radiant Gaming, and the first thing we're gonna go over in this Splatoon 3 Beginner's Guide is where your locker is. Honestly, this is something that the game doesn't tell you at all, at least not that I have found anyway. And I know whenever I first started playing Splatoon 3, I really wanted to know where my locker was because I love the customization aspect of games, but I could not find it. To find your locker, just go to the lobby to the bubblegum machine and walk through the doors in the back. They're kind of blurred out, so unless you accidentally did this, you probably wouldn't know. To buy stuff from your locker go to hot atlantis and purchase stuff from harmony but be careful because sometimes stickers can be like ten thousand plus and you'll spend it and not even know it i do it all the time to decorate your locker just go up to it click it and then click plus to edit then it's up to you to customize it the way that you want if you see other people with bigger lockers don't feel left out you can get a bigger locker at level 15 and an even bigger locker after that honestly one of the coolest new things about splatoon 3 is the iteration of the catalog think of the catalog as sort of a battle pass that doesn't cost money. I love this part of Splatoon 3. Not only do you level up your character levels, but you will also level up the catalog the more that you play. You can get different stuff like emotes, banners, stickers, etc. from leveling up your catalog. Your catalog levels up no matter what you're playing, whether you're playing Turf War, Anarchy Battles, or Salmon Run. You can see what you get for each level of your catalog on the Nintendo Online app, and you can also see how long a specific catalog lasts. They usually last around a couple months. And Splatoon 3 really isn't all just multiplayer pvp there is a story mode to get to the story mode just go to that guy hanging out underneath the sewer in the square captain cuttlefish or by clicking x and going to the crater i do recommend looking up the story of splatoon 1 and splatoon 2 before playing this one but definitely be sure to check out this story mode one great thing about the story mode in splatoon 3 is that everything is less daunting and this makes it a great place to try out all the weapons and really just get a feel for the game the levels are super fun and addicting in the story mode and not to mention that splatoon actually Actually has a pretty deep dark past and a more in-depth story than you may realize. And I know I mentioned to use a story mode to get used to the weapons, but before you buy weapons for stuff like Turf War, be sure to test them out. It is vital that before you buy a weapon from Sheldon at Ammo Knights, you test it out. This is a great place to see all sorts of weapons and weapon types, and you can click Y to test them out. Definitely don't buy a weapon without trying it first. Trust us. There are a bunch of weapons that I actually hate using in Splatoon 3. And even some that I like using, but I really hate using them because I don't like the specials or sub abilities. We'll go over specials and sub abilities more a bit later. And while we're on the topic of testing stuff out, be sure to try out motion controls and adjust your sensitivity. While you're playing Splatoon, if you feel that your sensitivity is too slow or maybe even too fast, you can adjust that. If you go to your menu with X and scroll over to options, you can change your sensitivity to whatever fits your playstyle. On that note, you can also toggle motion controls on or off. The game pushes motion controls at all, but to be honest, I really don't like using them. Some people who are way better than me swear that they are the only way to play Splatoon and you can be much better if you use them, but I very much like playing the game without them a lot better. All of this is preference, of course. Just be sure to try it out and see which one you like better. And if you're playing Splatoon, it is a lot better to play with friends. And one of the biggest quality of life updates about Splatoon 3 is the fact that you can now have your own party with your friends. Gone are the days when your friend has to join a party and you have to piggyback off of them. To start a party, click L, move the left stick to make it say with friends, click on the regular battle or whatever you want to do, and then you can join your friend or create a room for your friends to join. Easily the most fun way to play Splatoon is with some friends and maybe you guys can actually become super good together and learn each other's play style. While you are playing Splatoon, if things are getting a little nuts, you can click Y to reset your camera. When you're out here splatting the world, your camera can get a little crazy. If you get in a pickle, you can just click Y to reset your camera and it's super, super useful. Just be mindful of this when you're playing and get in the habit of doing it. That way you don't get caught in situations where you realize, hey, I probably should have done that. While we're on the topic of the buttons that you can click in Turf War, you can also click X to check your map. This is super helpful as you can see a real-time top-down view of the map. You can see if maybe someone is inking your base or maybe someone is covering the right side and the left side on your team and you need to cover the middle so that you get the most ground possible. This also shows what weapons your team is using if they're alive and where they got splatted this is a very good habit to get into so you know just what move you need to make next i definitely do this every time i get splatted just to see what's going on and give me a refresher see where i need to land see what i need to do as soon as i land and it really is just an amazing habit to get into speaking of amazing habits to get into you're gonna have to get used to refilling your ink the different thing about splatoon is the fact that you have to refill your ink obviously it's definitely not like other shooters where you have a certain amount of ammo and you have to reload and you can see 
see the number. Instead, in Splatoon, you have a certain amount of ink that you hold. When you're shooting, rolling, sloshing ink all the time to cover the most ground, you're going to need to refill a lot. Some weapons more than others, obviously. To do this, just hold ZL and you'll go into squid mode. If you're in your own ink, this will refill your ink depending on how long you stay in there. While I'm playing, you'll notice that I'm constantly shooting, then dipping, then shooting, then dipping, then shooting, then dipping. This is my play style as I prefer weapons with high fire rates, so I use tons of ink all the time, so I have to get used to refilling 24-7. This can get a little harder if you're using something like a roller or a slosher, though. You will notice the ink holder filling up when you go into squid mode, but even when you're not in squid mode, you can look at the back of your character and it will show the same thing. It's just in more of a real sense, kind of like a backpack than in a cartoony style whenever you're in squid mode. So be sure to pay attention to that as you're playing. This will help a ton and definitely save you from some close call situations where your enemy has a ton of ink and you're out and then you get splatted. And not only are your clothes stylish in Splatoon 3, they actually matter a ton. You'll notice that the clothes you can put on have different abilities like swim speed up, ink resistance up, ink saver, and more. Now all these abilities are subjective to your playstyle, but definitely be sure you are getting equipment. It may seem minuscule, but having this gear will help a ton. You can buy headgear from Nails at Not Couture, shirts from Jella Floor at Mana Wardrobe, and shoes from Mr. Coco at Crush Station. And it's also important to know that you can level up your clothes. If you see duplicate items in your shop that you can buy to help raise their star level, 100% buy them. These abilities will be a game changer to your gameplay. You also get what are called Super Sea Snails only from Splatfest. You can get Give these to Merch and he will raise your item levels too. The amount of stars on your piece of gear also affects the amount of slots for extra abilities, so keep that in mind. As most of us have mobile phones, be sure to download the Nintendo Switch online app. This will allow you to get what's called Splatnet. Once you log into your Nintendo account, you can see different clothes than you see in the in-game shops. You do have to order these and go pick them up from Merch though. You can also only order one item at a time, but realistically, you can order on your phone, go buy for Merch, then order again and so forth if you have enough money. Splatnet also has other additional things not in-game like Wondercrust. As you play Splatoon, the ink you spray will add up with P-Points. You can use these with Wondercrust to get cool things like backgrounds for your phones, but you can also get an in-game item for completing the entire list. There will be different journeys with Wondercrust to complete, so make sure you check back often. While we're on the topic of shops and clothes, it is important to remember that the shops do reset at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So be sure to be checking your shops every single day to make sure you get all the stuff you can. I love when the shops reset and seeing all the cool stuff I can get. Also, in Splatoon 3, be sure to buy food and drink. To buy food and drink in this game, you have to have tickets. To get tickets, you can get them in Story Mode, Salmon Run, The Catalog, and the shell out machine. Note that you don't just get these every time you do all this. It's more of an RNG if you get them. Food will grant you stuff like money up or experience up. The food and drink will last 20 rounds of turf war. So don't worry if you're playing and you have like seven rounds left and want to go to sleep, it won't cancel it. When you play again, it will keep the amount of rounds you had left on your character. Always have this bonus on your character or you're missing out. With that being said, be sure to use the bubblegum machine each day as well. When it gives you the option to pick your Splatfest team right before a Splatfest actually happens, you can get conscious shells to use on this. These con shells will disappear once the Splatfest is over, so make sure you use them all. You can get conch shells by raising your catalog level right before or during a Splatfest. Now, if a Splatfest is not going on, you can also use this machine for 5000 on your very first use of the day. After your first purchase of the day, the price does go up to 30000 I recommend only buying them for 5000 30000 is a lot and definitely use your conch shells if you have them during a Splatfest. One mistake a lot of Splatoon players make is inking walls and not just inking the ground. Know that in Turf War, only the ground matters as far as the score goes. In Turf War, the walls do not count with the overall score. I used to run around inking the walls and all. The only thing that counts in Turf War is if you're looking at the map from a top-down view. So only the horizontal plane really matters as far as the score goes. Now this doesn't mean you should never ink the walls. Inking the walls can really help you as far as reaching different areas to get to higher ground on your enemies. And while I'm on the topic too, don't forget to ink your base. So many times I see players just running off without touching their base at all. Sometimes this is a make or break between winning or losing a turf war. Say the whole time you and your enemy spend the whole match having it out in the middle of the map and you didn't ink your base but your enemies did. They will win because of the points they got for inking their base. Inking your base also allows for more mobility when spawning after getting splatted. It also helps get your special quicker before you run into any enemies. This brings me to my next point. Be sure to use your special as often as you can. Each loadout has its own special and ultimate ability. Some examples of these are the stamp hammer, the dolphin, the crab tank, etc. To charge these up, you have to ink the ground where it's not your color or not colored at all. Then you click R3 or your right stick in and unleash the power. This is why inking your base is so important. 
You get the special super quick because your base is all empty. And when you run into enemies in the middle, you've already inked your base, therefore build up your special. And then boom, ink stamp for the win. One absolutely vital thing to mention about using your special ability is that it auto refills your ink tank. So if my splat tank is low and I run into an enemy, I can break out my ink stamp, stamp them right there. And then after my special is done, continue inking the ground because it's refilled. Not only does each weapon have a special ability, but it also has a sub ability. These can range from splat bombs to ink showers to what I call ink Roombas. To use these sub abilities, make sure your ink gauge is filled up above the line. Certain sub abilities have different line levels you have to reach before you can use them, but you can also add clothes to help lower this as well. These can really help you in a pickle and sometimes you can even splat your enemies with these. I really like throwing out an ink bomb or an ink Roomba with like one second to go to get a little extra oomph at the end of a turf war and it can maybe even help your team win. Speaking of helping your team win, it is important to master the squid surge and the squid roll. Squid surge and squid roll are new to Splatoon 3. Squid Surge is where if you're climbing up a wall, you can hold B and you'll see your Inklings eyeballs bulging out and when you let go, your character will jump into the air. This is super helpful if an opponent is on top of the tower splatting all of your teammates. You can sneak up, Squid Surge, and then take them out. Squid Roll is sort of like a backwards jump in Mario. If you are going one way, then flick your left analog stick the other way and click B, your squid will jump into the air. This can help you get out of some sticky situations and of course, if you master these movements, you will be golden. While we're on the topic, it is important to be careful when super Super jumping. Super jumping is the ability to land on a teammate's spot. This is awesome, right? I used to absolutely abuse this mechanic when I played Splatoon 2. But what I found was that in that game and this one alike, I died more often than not when I landed on my teammates. What happens is your enemies can see where you're going to land. This gives them an easy splat. So be sure you are safe before jumping onto a teammate's location. Like if Ashley and I are playing together, we'll ask each other if it's safe before we super jump to each other. Because in reality, it'd be better for you to start at the base, swim to where you want to go, than to lose precious time by super jumping, getting splatted, and having all of those seconds lost where your enemies can move forward on your base and get the upper hand as you respawn. The game also does notify you when one of your teammates is super jumping on you. If this is the case, make sure they are protected, of course, if at all possible. That way you don't lose the precious seconds of your teammates being splatted and having to respawn as well. It's also very important to learn the maps. Learning maps is crucial to getting a win in Turf War. Some maps have places that can't be inked at all, and if you waste your time inking them, you'll possibly lose your team the round. If you want to explore the maps, go to the square, speak with the recon god staff, and select whichever game mode you want, select your stage, and boom, you are by yourself in this, and you'll get free range to learn the maps. And then you'll know exactly what you're getting into in the heat of the battle. And although a lot of these tips have been about splatting your enemies, know that splatting Splatting isn't absolutely everything, but it is something. This game obviously isn't Call of Duty where you have to go around to get the most kills. In Turf War, as I've said, the goal is to cover the most ground, right? So it's clear that this is more important than splatting your opponents. If you solely focus on just splatting your opponents, odds are you're going to lose because you won't have enough ground covered. Now, splatting isn't all pointless though. Obviously, if your enemies are out of commission, this gives you plenty of time to cover their ground and get the upper hand. So splatting isn't the most important thing, but it is important. If you're playing with friends, definitely work it out like if you're playing as a sniper or something. That way they know that you're going to focus on splatting the enemies while they cover the ground. There are also multiple games game modes in Splatoon 3 which make it so fun. We're going to go over Salmon Run first. Salmon Run honestly to me is one of the funnest. I think of Salmon Run as sort of the zombies of Splatoon. In this game mode you have three waves of enemies rush you and three of your teammates. These come in different shapes and sizes and also different bosses that require you to do different things. For example one boss may require you to throw a bomb into their compartment while the other one requires you to shoot the tail end of it like the steel eel. These bosses contain eggs that you have to get for Mr. Grizz. Each round has a quota of eggs you have to get. Some require nine, some 14, some 16, it all depends. Get all these eggs in the basket while at least one of your teammates survives a mass chaos and you win. Your weapons will change depending on your rotation. There will be four weapons in rotation for a span of around two days. Sometimes it's weapons you love, sometimes it's weapons you hate. Each round you will receive a new weapon. We do have a video explaining Salmon Run in depth, so be sure to check it out here. Now let's go over Anarchy Battles. Anarchy Battles are Splatoon 3's ranked battles. Each player has a rank in Anarchy Battles, and these range from C- to S plus 50, with everyone starting at rank C-, unless they're a veteran Splatoon 2 player, then they start at rank B-. Anarchy Battles have two different modes, Series Mode and Open Mode. Series Mode is winning five matches before losing three. In the series mode, you can't form a party and wreak havoc. You have to join solo and battle with yourself and three randoms. In open battles, these can be entered with a party and can last for five minutes. Now, anarchy battles aren't just turf war. 
That's what's so cool about them. There are actually four different modes you will play in Anarchy Battles. Rainmaker, which is where your goal is to grab the Rainmaker and carry it onto the top of the pedestal at your enemy spawn. You do have to break down the Rainmaker shield before picking it up though. Tower Control is where you have to keep control of a moving tower until it moves past the goal in enemy territory. At least one member of your team has to be on top of the tower and then it will start moving. Clan Beach is kind of like football except you have multiple clans. You will race through the map collecting as many clans as you can then throw them into the other team's goal to score. And in the famous words of John Madden, to win this, you just have to score more points than the other team. Splat Zones is the most familiar to Turf War. In this mode, you will have to keep an area covered with your ink for a specific amount of time. Whoever keeps the zone covered in their ink wins the match. Once 70% of an area is covered, it is considered captured. Merch and chunks are also two things you need to know about in Splatoon 3. Merch is someone you'll make a lot of dealings with in Splatoon 3. He sits right outside the arena lobby and he's who you'll talk to about your gear as I mentioned before. He'll also be able to scrub your gear, upgrade your gear, use chunks, and more. Chunks is a term you'll hear a lot in this game. Basically, chunks are what you get for duplicate items. These can help you get certain abilities for your equipment and change the main ability for each piece of equipment. If you guys have any other questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them to the best of my ability. If you guys like this video, be sure to hit the like button. Also subscribe and turn on the bell so you don't miss a video. This is one half of Irate Gaming signing off. Everyone have an amazing day and God bless.